Shalom and welcome with Bindernovsky. Here we are again. And today I will go into the second of the Pointed Fall Feast, a special meeting with Adonai. May it be an intimate, personal meeting with him. I will not cover everything because some of it I already mentioned in part one, the introduction, and part two, the Yom Trua, Feast of the Trumpets. Uh, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, which more accurately should be called uh, Yom HaKippurim, Day of Atonement, plural, because though there is only one atonement, but many, many sins, roughly to say that. So details about it, uh, about it feast, how to perform the things in Leviticus 16, I um, will not go into the details, but cover a bit from verse 29 to 34. Use, I used the King James translation, though it's not my preferred one, but I think it is most, most people use that. It's not my preferred because uh, English is not, it's not my lang native language. So I'm going now into it. The verse 29, and this shall be a statute forever unto you that in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, ye shall afflict your souls and do no work at all, whether it be one of your own country or a stranger that sojourneth among you. 30. For on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you to cleanse you, that ye may be clean from all your sins before the Lord. 31. It shall be a Sabbath of rest unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls by a statute forever. 32. And the priests whom he shall anoint, and whom he shall consecrate to minister in the priest's office in his father's stead, shall make the atonement, and shall put on the linen clothes even the holy garments. 33. And he shall make an atonement for the holy sanctuary, and he shall make an atonement for the tabernacle of the congregation and for the altar, and he shall make an atonement for the priests and for all the people of the congregation. 34. And this shall be an everlasting statute unto you to make an atonement for the children of Israel for all their sins once a year. And he did as the Lord commanded Moses. So this is feast in the seventh month of the 14th day, on the 14th day, regardless how you calculate, either the rabbinical mathematical counting, the moon sighting, or some might go along even with the Hanukkah or Enoch calendar, uh, whatever. And by that you end up slightly on a different day, roughly to say a week apart from one to the last option. But it's a day every year to afflict your souls. And I think Adonai will accept any of these variations. And don't cast you into hell if you don't pick one that might be, maybe some people claim, oh, if you don't celebrate on that certain day, you, you're you off. But I don't think Adonai is gracious and merciful and full of love and compassion. And he sees your heart. He sees your heart and he will look into that if you do it out of love or out of religious duty. So afflict your soul. Here we have the word Tanwu et Nafshi Techem. I like to see I sing actually Halleli Nafshi et Yeshua Halleli Nafshi et Yeshua Halleli Nafshi Halleli Nafshi et Yeshua Hallelujah. <laughs> For the word, for afflict, you can look up on Strong's H6031. It means something like to put down, become low, to stoop, humble or oneself, weaken oneself. So the typical way that it is understood is to fast, even a dry fast accompanied by prayer and mourning. Uh, you know, for all in remembrance of this, for the sins we have done. And... I'm sure we all have sinned a lot, almost every day, every hour, maybe not every minute, but we sinned a lot. We all fall, fall short the glory of Adonai. Okay, if someone 
for medical reason is not able to fast, he shall not do that. Please don't do that. But if you're able to do, do it. Fast the day. But I come later on it. When you look up for the, the definition in the worldly dictionary about put down ourselves, it gives a whole lot of meanings as well. Stop, depose, degrade, disapprove, humiliate, squelch, destroy. Uh, maybe in some respects similar, but necessarily not the same concept as what scripture speaks about. Surely doesn't mean to lay down flat on the floor, but sometimes it might be good to prostrate before the Lord and lay down before him on the floor. But it's, it means more to humble ourselves before Adonai voluntarily out of love and obedience and not humiliate someone else by force. And afflict our, your soul, afflict our soul. It's a question, what is soul? That's our nefesh in Hebrew, which can mean our soul, self, life, creature, person, appetite, mind, living being, desire, emotion, or passion. I think it has a few more meanings, but you'll find more about it on Strong's H5315. One of the meaning is seed of appetites, and there is where one part of the interpretation of fasting is pointing to. And clearly, it's not far-fetched and relative straightforward. A seed of appetite. Put it down for a day. But as it also points to desire, I think it is relative easy to imagine. We have all some sort of desires. Uh, though it might be eventually, possibly, uh, I don't know, if fasting or a desire, uh, put down the desires are harder, I don't know, but uh, it's possibly very hard to put it down, down. Some people might have the desire to watch TV all day long or some stuff on certain, you know, just rectangular toy and they're almost, that's almost glued in, a, in many people's hands. You only need to look around how this became almost a plague or it is a plague. A plague of mind control and brainwashing and this is, and this with all the radiation is even not healthy, but it's another kind of warmth. Uh, and the desire to eat, definitely, that our body permanently, yeah, I want to eat something, a nice steak or pizza or whatever. Put it down and fast. Y you know, uh, I, I don't think many of the desire to eat the books, but put it down and fast. The, the real meal, not uh, the manufactured artificial food or whatever, factory food. There could be many more examples of desire, but I'll leave it up to you to fill the blanks with your desires and how to put them down for a day. Fast and pray and meet Yeshua. Because he wants to meet with you, the King of Kings, the Lord of all, the creator of everything. He wants to meet with you. May he tell you things you never knew. And he speaks through his Holy Spirit and asks you to do certain things. If he does it, then do it. But check with scripture if it was truly the voice of Adonai and not your own thoughts, ideas or unconscious mind or daydreams or whatever. If he tells you to pray for your family, neighbor and the homeless around the corner and tell them about salvation, uh, to repent and ask for forgiveness. It is surely from Yeshua because he wants no one to perish, but everyone to have, be saved and have eternal life. I mean, if, if the voice tells you Oh, I like to have a new Mercedes or Ferrari or something like that. Uh, it might be very well your own desires or your unconscious mind or your jealousy for the neighbor of the neighbor, the rich, wealthy neighbor or whatever. Put it down, maybe perhaps permanently, not only for 24 hours. 
But it also says in Leviticus, you shall not do any work at all on that day. Not working means no regular work. I mean, okay, if you are a doctor, I'm talking about the doctors, the real doctors and not the protocol following murders, or if you're a firefighter and you get an emergency call where lives are in danger, then better you do it. You go and do it. Because saving lives, saving lives is above all laws, is above all commandments, even above Yom Kippur. The Pharisees never understood that. And till this very day, they don't understand. But if you work in a, say in a factory or in some kinds of business or hairdresser or whatever, get the day off. Or if you're self-employed, just stop working for a day. And also at home, no cooking. I mean, if you have children, don't let them hunger for a day unless they are in the age of accountability and understand what this feast is all about. And you as parents, it's your duty and your calling to teach them all the Torah, all the feasts, everything, a whole scripture. But you can pre-cook for that day and or, or you just serve other meals where you don't need to cook at all. Children sometimes are happy enough if there's something that is not cooked. And of course, you shall change the diapers on small children. Don't forget that. That's not work. And by the way, fasting is actually a great treatment for cancer or against cancer, to fight cancer. Though it requires a lot longer fast with a very careful preparation. So don't just jump into a long fast if you're diagnosed with cancer, so for example. Then we read in scripture, the feasts are for everyone, for the children of Israel as much as for the strangers. Now I know the discussion when people argue with the death and resurrection of Yeshua, those things are done away or even the whole law is abolished. But no, it's not abolished. It shall be, as it's written, an everlasting statute to make atonement for the children of Israel for all their sins. Well, the law of sin and death, Yeshua conquered at the cross, but the rest are to keep. Heaven and earth will pass away, but not the smallest letter and serif of his word. And his word is, is, includes the Torah, all the commandments from the beginning. Then some may argue it is only for the Jews. Uh, yes, there are Jews who claim to be the Jews. There are not, but that's another subject. And Yeshua himself said he was not sent except to the lost sheep of Israel. So if you are a descendant of Israel, you shall keep it. And if you're a descendant of monkeys, it's up to you what you like to do. And, uh, but you may hear, hear this sentence when you stand before him one day, I never knew you. There's the argument, the temple is no more and no priest and so on. But Revelation 1, 6 and other verses speak about that we were made priests. And in 2 Corinthians verse 16, for example, it says, And what agreement meant hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. If you want to be his, and he shall walk in you, and you shall walk in him, you are the temple. Well, there would be a lot more to say, but you can search and listen, which are good preachers, not prosperity preachers, some who is able to explain. Watch teachers or listen to teachers they are, who are able to explain all the details and most are better than I can do. But how to know they teach the truth? It's very simple. Take the Bible in your hand and if necessary, other tools like concordance and so on and check if the things they teach line up with scripture or at least don't contradict. If they use uh, metaphorical elements or ideas and things of modern 
in a modern world where it didn't exist back then in when the Bible was written, you need to ask the Holy Spirit to bring you to understanding. So the Bereans did it with Paul's teachings, as we read in Acts 17, 11, and they did not have an, a concordance or advanced tools to search. So when they could do it, you can do it the more and search it and check it out for yourself. I even encourage you to do it with my words that I speak. As sometimes metaphorical language and prophecies are hard to decipher or find an interpretation. Uh, whether in this message or prophecy or dream or vision, I highly advise you always to ask the Holy Spirit in for wisdom and understanding because He knows the absolute truth more than we know all together. We prophesy or teach in parts like tiny little puzzle pieces of a puzzle, but he's able to show you the whole picture, uncensored and in truth. Yes, Yeshua washed away all sins, and we don't need to bring any more animal sacrifices, because he sacrificed himself for us once and forever. Maybe this Yom Kippur will be a day to remember what he has done, and therefore humble ourselves, humble yourself before him, as an act of obedience and love. And he said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And if you love him, keep it. Uh, for me, it's almost easier to keep his commandments and, than to cook a, a good meal. Others may not. Uh, others struggle maybe more to repair a washing machine or whatever for me is cooking. However, I wish you a great hug, a precious holiday where you meet with yud heh wav -Hey, the Elohim of Abraham, Yitzchak and Yaakov. Because he is alive, may he comes near and speaks to you in a way like never before. And as the prophet Ramayahu, which is Jeremiah, has spoken in chapter 33, verse 3, Call me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. Actually, the word for unsearchable can also mean hidden or secret, inaccessible. Before you stand for the throne and he might say, I never knew you. That is the worst case. So let come to him now and let him speak to you and speak to him that he will know you and he will, you will know him. And let this be a great, marvelous holiday. But with that, I will leave you. And yeah, if it edifies you, maybe you come next again next in the next video, be mightily blessed and Adonai be with you forever and ever and ever. Shalom, shalom, Shabbat shalom, Shabbat kadosh.